This story is the background of the revelation of the Quran, Surah An Najm, verses 19 to 21, which were revealed in Mecca. In the past, I can chat with them, worship together with them. But now, we act like enemies. Well, Rasulullah, that may have something to do with the way you pass your divine message to them. Look at them, surrounded by their idols. Why don't they listen to me and worship Allah instead? You used to kiss them too, right? Oh, oh, wait a minute. I think I got another message from Allah. I need to pass it to them. Oh boy, here we go again. Look who's coming. He only wants to insult our ancestors' beliefs. Are these what you worship? All of these idols? Yes, you worship them as well not too long ago, remember? Have you then seen Al-Lot and Al-Uzza, and the third one, Manat, as well? Suddenly, Satan came and inserted words into Muhammad. <gasps> Others don't realize what Muhammad went through. These are the exalted Garanik, whose intercession is approved. <laughs> These are the exalted Goranics, which are high-flying cranes. Their intercessions are expected. Wow, Muhammad just praised our gods. He returns back to his previous religion, the religion of our ancestors. Did he just acknowledge other gods besides Allah? Yeah. Maybe Allah has daughters after all. Haha. <laughs> Tawheed? What Tawheed? After that Muhammad prostrated in front of the idols. The Meccans joined him in worship. Wow! This is another level. Do we need to prostrate as well? He is our prophet. He knows better than us. All Muslims and non-Muslims prostrate in front of the idols. On that day, Muhammad became a mushrikeen or polytheist again. After that, Muhammad apparently still worshipped the gods of the Quraysh, so Allah rebuked him many times to stop doing it. Quran, Surah Al-Mudathir, verse 1 to 5. O, oh, you Muhammad, enveloped in garments, arise and warn, and magnify your Lord, and purify your clothes, and keep away from our ruj or the idols. Allah's warning came down because Muhammad was still a polytheist and continued to practice his old habits of worshipping idols and keeping idols in his house, even though he had been appointed as a prophet, and had also received three surahs from Allah. Surah Al-Mudathir is the fourth surah in the Quran. The story about Muhammad keeping idols in his house is mentioned in Sunan Abu Dawud, Nomer 4158. Narrated by Abu Huraira. The Messenger of Allah said, Jibril came to me and said, I came to you last night and was prevented from entering simply because there were idol statues at the door. For there was a decorated curtain with images on it in the house. And there was a dog in the house. So he ordered me to cut off the head of the idols in the house, the curtain to be cut up, in order to take the dog out. Later on, Jibril came to Muhammad to cancel Muhammad's praise to the goddesses Allat, Aluzah, and al Manat in Surah and Najm. But strangely, the cancellation occurred in Surah al Hajj, which was revealed in Medina, about eight years after Muhammad left Mecca. Why wait so long? Apparently, Muhammad did not feel the need to change the verse praising the Quraysh gods, so eight years passed without any changes to the verse. Surely something happened that urged him to change it. Most likely, his enemies in Medina found the polytheistic verse and they questioned it.
O Muhammad, you insult us polytheists, even though you are worshipping idols yourself. You put your praise of all Lot, all Uzza, Manat, in Quran, Surah and Najm, verse 19 to 21. How is that? Oh, about those verses, huh? Jibril has just told me that those verses did not come from him, but from Satan who deceived me so that I said the satanic verses. But no worry, Allah already changed it to this. Have you then seen all Lot and all Uzza? And the third one, Manat, as well? Do you prefer to have sons while you attribute to him daughters? I feel sad because I have mispronounced the holy verses. But Allah then comforted me. Quran, Surah Al-Hajj, verse 52. Whenever we sent a messenger or a prophet before you, O prophet, and he recited our revelations, Satan would influence people's understanding of his recitation. But eventually Allah would eliminate Satan's influence. Then Allah would firmly establish his revelations. And Allah is all-knowing, all-wise. How can Satan control the tongue and mind of a prophet? You say that because you are a hypocrite, your heart is rough and full of strife. Quran, Surah Al-Hajj, verse 53. All that so he may make Satan's influence a trial for those hypocrites whose hearts are sick and those disbelievers whose hearts are hardened. Surely the wrongdoers are totally engrossed in opposition. Shirik means associating partners with Allah, or worshipping gods other than Allah. In Islam, it is an unforgivable sin, according to Quran, Surah An Nisa, verse 48. Indeed, Allah does not forgive association with Him, but He forgives what is less than Duh, for whom He wills, and he who associates others with Allah, has certainly fabricated a tremendous sin. How could the Prophet of Allah be able to commit Shirik continuously for eight years? When he was caught reciting the satanic verses in the Quran, he then insulted those who rebuked him with the Quran, Surah Al-Hajj, verse 53. Muhammad was a Musarik, because he praised and even prostrated to the gods of Quraysh in the Quran, Surah and Najm, verses 19 to 21. He did sujud to the Quraysh goddesses, sujud, Laknatullah. Eight years later, he changed the content of the verse and acknowledged it in the Quran, Surah Al-Hajj, verse 52. If Allah has kept the Quran pure, why did he wait for so long to replace those satanic verses? If Muhammad could be controlled by Satan to recite the satanic verses for eight years, then what about other verses? How can we be very sure that none of them coming from Satan? Quran, Surat at Toba, verse 17. It is not for the Mushrik to maintain the mosques of Allah while they openly profess disbelief. Their deeds are void, and they will be in the fire forever. Are you still expecting the Prophet's intercession? He's in hell now.